Hello, my name's Michael Keneally and I'm speaking to you from our healing centre in the west of Ireland on the Atlantic Ocean coast. And this video is about having a natal chart astrology reading from me. A reading of your astrology birth charts. Now I would say before I go into the details of what I offer that most of my readings actually encompass both natal astrology and current predictive astrology. But to make the video simpler, I'm just talking about what I offer for natal astrology here. And basically I offer an expert combination of both Western psychodynamic astrology and Vedic astrology, which depicts our incarnational life purpose and our destiny of which our psychological self depicted by Western astrology is just a part. And you get all charts beforehand so you can refer to them during the recorded reading and two of the three purchase options include getting extensive preparatory reports as well. And of course there's full follow-up sort of aftercare question and answer discussion after the reading if you want it. And what I would say is because I feel I genuinely expertly cover both Western and Vedic astrology, this is an ideal opportunity for someone who's looked into their Western astrology a bit and are interested in reaching out and seeing what Vedic astrology has to offer them. So my readings are very good for that. They can also be very in-depth for people who know a lot as well. And I would say that Western astrology is fantastic, wonderful, when it's done well, for depicting our psychological self, its unfoldment, how to develop perception, how to get healing and empowerment. And my astrology is crucially geared to healing and empowerment possibilities. So Vedic, astro Vedic astrology, however, isn't just psychological. And when I first opened to Vedic astrology about 25 years ago, I was absolutely wowed because Vedic astrology depicted, for example, my, the unusual circumstances of my birth and infancy with perfection, with supremely accurate timing, with supremely accurate spiritual interpretation, whereas Western astrology didn't actually touch the circumstances of my birth. And it hooked me. And of course, I found so much more that Vedic astrology powerfully and accurately depicted. But that's not to knock Western astrology. You absolutely need Western astrology not only because of the psychological perception, but also because Western astrology encompasses the outer planets, Uranus, Neptune and Pluto, whose energy entered the human consciousness from the moment they were effectively discovered. And of course, Western astrology, supremely importantly, also encompasses Chiron, your wounded healer, and I can't state the importance of that enough. And of course we get so much more detail and vastness about our existential wound depicted by Chiron when we then switch over to Vedic astrology and discover all the vastness and the nuances with which Vedic astrology amplifies the description and deep understanding of our existential wound and as I said that's useless unless you then go on to looking at how you can use that supreme perception for healing and empowerment and I work closely with my partner Maggie Pashley and her website is www maggiepashley.com www.maggieepashley.com and Maggie is expert in innumerable worldwide healing methods 
And if you want to look at the details of my astrology readings website, it's starwheelastrology.com. Starwheelastrology.com. So let's go into briefly what do you get in these very expert and very worthwhile, worthwhile worldwide recorded readings. So as I said, you get your charts beforehand and if you wish, you get, you know, immensely detailed and valuable reports as well, depending on which reading option you select. So in your charts, first of all, I depict your Western astrology birth chart and I use AstroCalc program first of all for that. I've used AstroCalc for nearly 30 years. I think it's a beautifully clear program. I have every praise for it. And so you get a copy and paste of your AstroCalc Western Astrology birth chart. And of course in the reading I will look at your ascendant sign, your rising sign, how you assert into the world your sun. The sun is your egoic self, the king of your kingdom and your moon, your emotional reality. Sun often depicts fathering and moon mothering. And also, as I said, we, we lay emphasis on Chiron. And I pick out so many other things from your astrocount birth chart. For example, have you got, you know, what's the incarnational destiny meaning of the position of the nodes of the moon in your birth chart as expressed in terms of its psychological effects for you and how it can be perceived and healed and then we look at things like planets conjunct the nodes and planets square the nodes as missed steps that you're called to work with in this lifetime now and then I then paste into this preparatory charts sending document that I send you your Megastar Astrology Programme. And I've worked with this, I think, it, it, over 20 years. It's the programme of the Swiss Huber School, which is very psychodynamic, and I trained with them. And one of the things it does is beautifully depict our chart aspect shapes. It's very strict rules about how far off exact an aspect can be and still be considered an aspect. So it produces a simple, clear, beautiful, strong chart. And the way the aspect lines combine, create chart aspect sh shapes, which are deep keys to our sub-personalities. And remember, our psychological self encompasses a range of sub-personalities which can often be very different to each other and not get on at all and some of them be, can be cut off and we're not fully aware of them and yet they're driving our lives and making us do things and we're wondering why where did that come from and so I work on your uh, sub-personalities and especially like your unaspected or cut off sub-personalities uh, I also do an analysis of the personal rays system. So the personal rays system came down from us from Alexandrian Egypt. And it was particularly brought into the modern Western consciousness by Alice Bailey. And Megastar offers a way of extrapolating from your birth chart which particular rays you were specially incarnated to work with this time. For example, just one example. Did you incarnate to get the quality of will and purpose, Ray 1, right this time? And we discuss and work on that. And also using Megastar, you get a, a dynamic counting table, an expression of your nature versus nurture. Are you the product of your inherited nature? Or are you the product of your nurture, especially your earliest nurture environment? That is such a useful thing to have perception offered and to ponder on and understand. Sometimes our earliest environment can absolutely wipe out or skew the gifts of our inherited nature. Sometimes our earliest environment can positively build on our inherited nature. It is sincerely so useful to have this statement for you to consider and work with. 
And then the preparatory reports move on to your Vedic astrology. And of course, Vedic astrology isn't geared to psychology. Modern Western astrology, when properly done, is geared to psychology and everything is expressed psychologically. But Vedic astrology dates back, well, thousands of years and certainly 3,000 years ago and is much more anchored to the eternal. So Western astrology uses the tropical zodiac, whose start position is wherever the sun is on the first day of spring. Whereas Vedic astrology uses the sidereal zodiac, which is anchored to the stars and is thus a statement of the eternal. And Vedic astrology does need to be interpreted through the sidereal zodiac for its full power and accuracy. And so I talk you through what the two zodiacs offer you, your psychological self from Western your destiny self and incarnational life purpose from Vedic sidereal zodiac astrology. And so in the report I paste in your Vedic birth chart or Rashi chart and then a table showing the exact position of planets in signs and then planets in the nakshatras. The nakshatras are so valuable they're the 27 sign lunar zodiac of Vedic astrology. They depict our emotional reality, warts and all, and the possibilities we might have for growth of our emotionally based consciousness, our moon based emotional consciousness, for the growth of that, you know, growing it through spiritual perception, transformation, and healing. Um, I offer also tables clearly showing planetary strength and it's very useful to know if you have a weak planet because if you don't, as it were, clearly see and know that, you might not realise the tremendous, horrific consequences that can, you can come, for example, for having, from having a weak sun or from having a Mars that's too strong, etc. And this perception, as I said, in the case of my astrology, is never formulaic. It's always linked to healing and empowerment. And then we go on. The next table is uh, planets as indicators. And there's one system of indicators. Um, I won't go into the detail, but the supreme and first one is our Atma Karika which is in some ways the most important planet in our Vedic birth chart in our life. It shows the planet that depicts our most central soul task in this life. And the nature of that planet is particularly activated when you're in a Vedic predictive period ruled by that planet and your life can be absolutely turned upside down and you're wondering why. When you understand your Atma Karika, you begin to be able to decode the messages and work with what's coming to you. But I'm going to be discussing that in the predictive um, video in a moment, a separate video. And we touch on the wonderful um, Varga charts of Vedic astrology, or the harmonic charts, or divisional charts as they're sometimes called. So, for example, the D9 chart, the Navamsha, describes our soul path, our ideal ashram that we should dwell in, you know, life state that we should dwell in, and our marriage issues. The D7, Saptamsha, describes our issues with our children and our creativity. What sort of creativity did you, do you have? And, for example, the D20, the Vimshamsha, describes your spiritual path and its issues. So I touch on those. And of course, when you do your Vedic astrology course with me, you go into them in detail. That's www.mastervedicastrology.com. And, in, and, and, and used in interpretation of the Varga charts or the divisional charts are the wonderful Varga deities which throws such light on the way your life issues will manifest. Each Varga chart describes an area of your life. And then you look at the, the Varga deities, which show, for example, if you will be 
you know, quite yang and assertive on value issues or quite yin and passive and receptive. If your creativity will be quite acid or quite meditative, just, you know, just, but, but there are many Varga deities which I teach. And, um, and, and, and that, and you look at the planet's strength across these different Varga charts. Because, for example, well, Jupiter in a woman's birth chart says her husband issues. Jupiter might be in crap standing in her natal chart, but in wonderful standing in her Navamsha or marriage chart. And that means that when her Jupiter Dasher or Jupiter predictive period comes along, suddenly marriage issues will flower and fall into place. So well worth hearing. And then I also paste in from the Kala astrology program, their wonderful analysis of Avashtas, statements of the standing of each of your planets, and also how your planets treat each other. And this is so well worth hearing. So for example, one of the types of Avashtas describes the karmic maturity of each of your planets. Is it innocent, fresh and childish? Is it at the end of a long cycle of incarnations and a situation where next time you'll incarnate perhaps to work on a different slice of the meanings, the spiritual meanings of that planet. You're at the end of the cycle you were working on. And another system of Avashtas says how the planets treat each other. And this is so important to hear. For example, does your Mars assert and assert and assert and trash your Saturn, which is all about consistency and structure? Do you have Saturn conjunct Venus, which can mean, not necessarily, but can mean that your Venus really, really, really is loving and tries to please Saturn that sucks and sucks and sucks and your Venus gets trashed because of your Saturn script? Huge meanings for love. You know, get this reading from me. Saturn conjunct moon is, I feel, so difficult. One of the most difficult conjunctions. Difficult for mothering. You know, difficult for flowing exploration and expression of your emotional issues and mind. K2, South Node can absolutely trash a planet it's conjunct with. If it's conjunct the sun, you know, your fathering issues and your sun as king of your kingdom issues can be trashed. If it's conjunct your moon, mother probably didn't value you and you'll be often subject to huge emotional outbursts. And let me say again, yes, and again, and again, and again. It's no good just hearing this. You've got to go into it deeply and focus on healing and empowerment. So go on to my Star Wheel Astrology website and book a reading. So what I've told you about is how I handle your natal chart interpretation. I'm now going to do a separate video explaining how I handle your predictions when I give a reading. Thank you.